Hello, those of you watching Eagle's Nest Ministries, I'm Dr. Gary Greenwald. This is Prophet Amos. This is Prophetess Debbie. Hi. And we're here to minister to your needs today. We know that we do not have the answers, but Jesus has every answer to your problems. And if you're in a situation that seems impossible, we just want to encourage you that sometimes God gives us the answer right, right here while we're on the broadcast. Yes. So we're going to do something different today. Last week we had some people call in while we were on the air and we saw that they had immediate needs and in some cases they even had prophetic needs so we could prophesy to their need. And we just felt such an anointing on that that here's what I want to say to our Facebook audience today. You know, we, we felt led of the Spirit to respond to some of your comments and requests as we're live here on the broadcast. So if you have a special comment, a special request, or you need prayer for some situation, then, or, or maybe you even need a prophetic word on a situation or a decision that you're making in your life, please send us a comment on Facebook Live while this broadcast is airing. You can actually post your comments and this gives us the opportunity for our staff to bring us those comments and tell us what you're asking for. And if we don't get to you, we're going to pray about responding in our next broadcast. And our broadcasts are on Sundays at 6.30. So you might write this down, Sundays at 6.30 and Thursdays at 7 o'clock. So we look forward to hearing from you, and we want to uh, just be more uh, live and intuitive, letting the Holy Spirit lead us as you're watching us on this Facebook Live. So anyway, again, we're discovering some of our assignments in life, and I wanted to basically each Sunday and each Thursday, we give you one of the prophetic words that we feel are very uh, apropos to where the body of Christ is right now. And my administrator, Janet, she keeps giving me mm -hmm. all of these little uh, prophetic words that are coming forth yeah. from the major prophets. And that's what we're giving you at the beginning of these broadcasts. Now, I'm gonna go back to one that was on November 14th, 2018, because these, these prophetic words, the Bible says they may be for a specific season. Uh, they may not be for right now, but they always come before something major happens in the world. So I love to hear what the prophets are saying because God does nothing in the earth except he first shows it to his servants, the prophets. So even this is the, the word that uh, we have from 2000, or November 14th, 2018. And it speaks of a coming revival. And I like this because this speaks of God pouring out his spirit. And what I really like about it, it's by Charlie Shamp, one of God's major prophets. It's about an outpouring of God's glory that's coming even in Los Angeles. So I thought I'd give this to you. Here's what the word says. For the Lord would say unto you, California, there has been tremendous weight laid upon you over the years, but I will break the bands of wickedness off the land. Yes, there will be a shaking, but the yoke is breaking. The burden is, become, is being removed. A revival harvest is coming. Now this is to Los Angeles. What the enemy will do, God will turn it to your good. So whatever Satan is doing, even in Los Angeles or in California, God is gonna turn it for good. For as the land shakes, I will remove the yoke and a mighty revival will begin to flow. This kind of indicates that there could be an earthquake or earthquakes that will be a sign that God is going to shake the land. It goes on, the state will rumble and shake and bondages will break. Watch, for a shaking will come that moves the mountains and the ceilings of limitations will break under the power of my right hand. Did I not say, yet once it is a little while, and I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land, 
and I will shake all nations, and the desire of all nations, that's our Lord and His glory, shall come. And I will fill this house with glory. Did I not say the silver is mine and the gold is mine? Watch as I shake the land, and new gold is found in mines as a sign. It's interesting that my, my prophetic administrator has scheduled already one trip up to the mines in Northern California, yeah. and she's now scheduling another one because she feels that there's going to be another major or, uh, gold okay. strike yes. like it was in the early yes, days yes. of California. Yeah. And then this is a prophecy, which uh, I don't think she was even aware of, that God's he's going to have gold come because gold and glory are the same word in the Hebrew. I don't know if you're aware of that. But uh, when God says, I'll fill this house with glory, he says it, he'll fill it with gold too. So here's what it goes on. The glory of this latter house shall be greater than of the former. And in this place will I give peace. And they will say, peace in what place? I tell you, my presence will come once again in L.A. And I will fill many with my fire. I don't know if you were in those early days of God's fire and glory coming to LA, but I went to some of the meetings with Amy Semple McPherson mm -hmm. at the Angelus Temple. And I mean, she was kind of a, a ostentatious lady. She brought elephants on stage and had uh, I love it. great pageants and everything. But she also had major healings and the glory of God came in, and the presence of God was so heavy in Angela's temple. But God says, I will fill many with my fire, my oil, and my glory. In the city of angels, I will come in the temple of angels. This is Angela's temple. So God is saying, I'm going to come again in the temple of angels, and there will be an outpouring. Yes, in the house of Amy at Glendale. Wow. The latter shall be greater than the former. So I'm telling you, I was in the meetings where the glory was really great in Amy Semple's meetings, wow. and it's going to be greater. Yes. Then the prophecy goes on. The glory will be released like you have never seen it before. The ground will shake from the marching of the army of the Lord into the streets. And what t took place in 1992 shall attempt to come again as well. In other words, this is talking about riots, and so this is already yes. something, even though this was given in 2018, God says part of the sign of this coming, this glory, is that riots are going to break out in Los Angeles yes. and other cities. And so what took place in 1992 shall attempt to come again as well. A riot like Rodney, the enemy has set in his eyes, this is interesting, Rodney, he's talking about Rodney King, the black man who was savagely beaten by the police during the 1992 Los Angeles riots. And this started something like we're seeing in many cities around America right now where a black man was beaten and uh, now it's Floyd. I'm just saying it's interesting that this prophecy was given in 2018 two years ago, and it's coming to pass right now. So it says that, and what took place in 1992 shall attempt to come again as well. A riot like Rodney, the enemy has set in his eyes, but what I did through my servant Rodney, this is Rodney Howard Brown. Now, I don't know if you've ever been in a Rodney Howard Brown service, but Rodney Howard carried a glory anointing. He came to America to bring this glory. And in his meetings, people got drunk out of their heads. Uh, people trying to walk up on the stage would fall all over the place. And people would be acting silly. And I just was amazed at the presence of God because he brings a drunkenness in his presence. There's like a new wine, a, a drunkenness that comes. And this is what Rodney Howard Brown has brought to America. And revival. He brought revival also. Yes. And he still has a great ministry going, I think, in New York. I mean, uh, Florida. 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 Okay, in Florida. So Rodney Howard Brown, 
Uh, he's been in the news just lately. But anyway, let's see. The church, uh, there shall come a greater force into L.A., for there will be a riot in the streets, but revival and harvest will come to stem the tide of racial hate. The sound of joy will be overwhelming. It will be great. Yes, revival fire fell in the past, but a greater glory outpouring will come and last. Superstars, athletes, and the elite will see what I do and turn their hearts and be made new. Some in the church will, will not understand it, but humble and follow my command. In other words, there will some in the church that don't understand what's happening, but they will see that it's of God and they will actually end up following his command. The army of the Lord is being released. There's marching in the streets. Yes, there will be miracles in their feet. I say to you again, LA, you are not a land that has been forsaken. You are not a city forsaken. Set on a, you are a city set on a hill, so you will reveal redemption, saith the Lord. I'm, I'm just saying, this was a prophet, mm -hmm. Charlie Shemp, sharing yes. this word. And uh, even though Rodney, Rodney King was beaten in those days, uh, and there was looting of stores in Los Angeles. I mean, now God is going to come to Los Angeles and reveal his glory. So I just want to encourage you, don't look at the situation on the news and feel like everything is desperate and we're losing. I mean, God is always in control. Right. Amen. Amen. Anyway. You know, the media is limiting with their... Are you, is your um, mic on? Yes, yes. Uh, the media is limiting with their presenting, so everything that's being spoken on the news is not 100% true for sure. Well, we know that the news is very tainted. It is on the left, and uh, you know I don't want to get political on you, but I'm no. going to say that there's a lot of lying media, and uh, they're trying to push everyone one way in this election. And you need to pray for our president right yes, now because yes, yes. Uh, the Bible says pray for those who have the rule and the authority over you because they were set in place by God and we cannot give up on California no. or America because right. God is about to pour out his spirit. He yes. says in the last days I will pour out my spirit on yes. all flesh. Yes, so, yes. amen. You know, the Bible says the glory of the Lord will cover the, the earth like the waters cover the sea. And I'm saying the sea is covered by all this water. Yeah. And God says his glory is going to flood in like that. And nobody's going to escape it. Amen. So I just want you to get excited. That, that shaking, Dr. Gary, the revival, it talks about what you just said in Joel 2 and Acts 2. It's going to be like the days of Acts. And then also Haggai 2, chapter 2, says... For thus says the Lord of hosts, once again in a little while I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and dry land, and I will shake all nations, and they shall come to the desire of all nations, and I will fill this temple with glory, says the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine and the gold is mine, says the Lord of hosts. The glory of this latter temple shall be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And I just, you know, while you were speaking, I was writing this, and I just sense in the beginning of this broadcast a low flame of God's fire, and um, of his revival. I felt the shaking already. It shall increase from city to city, from county to county, from state to state, across our nation, across our land. So I'm so glad that you, you're you in, uh, that you've tuned in to Facebook because, Apostle, I know you have something really great to, uh, to teach the people. And then after that, offering after that, there's going to be ministry to those who need healing or a special prayer request. So let me encourage everybody watching today that God is going to release a wealth of gold on California. So it'll be a sign that the gold of his glory has come on California. Amen. Amen. So a lot of prophets are feeling that California might be the epicenter of not just the shaking, but the release of God's glory yes. that will start flowing across the nation. 
whether it is or not, I just want to say that God will shake everything that can Amen. be shaken. Amen. And that we cannot give up on America. We should be praying. The Bible says, first of all, pray for those who have authority over you. The first person you should be praying for is your president. Pray mm -hmm. for him on a yes. daily basis and ask God to protect Amen. him and his family and even those that are around him that are like his wisdom. They give him insight and wisdom of the things he should do. And I believe that God put President Trump in his office. Oh, he did. And even if you don't like him, God doesn't always choose perfect men. All through the Bible, God used imperfect men. Even David sinned greatly when God made him the king over Israel. So you cannot find a perfect man, but you can find men that have the blessing of the Lord upon them. Yes. So I just want to encourage you, pray for your president, pray that God surrounds him with yes. wise men that are influenced by the Holy Spirit, yes. and that we will have a peaceable and quiet life, because we know that upheaval is coming right now. I, I watch here. the news and I'm amazed at how the left can justify all the rioting and looting and destroying of stores and people, you know, just coming to paint graffiti and paint things on the, the wall. I mean, and, and we have an insanity going on, but it's a precursor to what God's about to do. So God is going to have the final word. He always lets the devil go first. Amen. And then he says, now let me show you what I'm going to do. That's right, because that's a message of hope. Apostle Gary. So we want to give you hope tonight where there's despair or maybe you've lost, you've suffered loss. The Lord is going to, I just see, um, he gave me a lot of RE words today, recover, repent, recompense, reverse, uh, revive, revival. And so Father, I just thank you Lord for a spirit of hope that's going to burn in your heart tonight as you listen to Apostle speak. And I'm just excited about tonight, the ministry about tonight, what the Holy Spirit is going to do tonight. Again, if there are some of you, if you turned in, uh, tuned in a little later here, we saw that last week we were giving prophetic words to people that were actually yes. in, they were letting us know what their needs were and how they were appreciating the broadcast. And we started giving some prophetic words to them. And the response was so great yes. that we felt like since we're all prophetic, our church is prophetic. Yes. Oh, yes. And God says that the prophets are going to start manifesting again in these last days because God does nothing in the earth until he first shows it to his servants, the prophets. Right. So we should be prophetically ministering to some of you. So send in your comments if you have a special prayer need, if you need a prophetic word. Uh, you know, we can only do a few, but we're going to start putting those together during the week and saying, let's uh, respond to these yes. in our next broadcast. Absolutely. So again, you're not forgotten. We're, no. we, we're excited that yes. the Holy Spirit speaks through men. Yes. He's still speaking today. And Jesus was God's prophet who brought God's word, the living word to the people of his day. Amen. And God is still speaking through his servants, the prophets. So we want to encourage you. I, we're looking today at discovering your assignment and your God-given purpose in life. We're going to try to finish that message that I started a couple of weeks ago because every one of you, every born-again believer has an assignment. They have a destiny. They have a purpose that God created them for that no other person on the planet could fulfill exactly like them. Right. Now, God sometimes has to raise up another because they're not uh, faithful to right. the prophetic words they received or the directions that God has been giving them. And they just don't want to respond to God. And God, I mean... Every one of us, if we will look back on our life, we'll see that our steps were ordered of the Lord. Yes. And that I was pulled out of the business world, even though I was making good money. I was pulled out by three prophets and a little lady that drove to the front door of my <laughs> sign company and yeah. gave me a word from God. And then I couldn't get one sale. It was the first month in the whole uh, 10 years of my, minute of my, my sign company yeah. that I couldn't get one sale. 
And all my salesmen were coming to me saying, we can't get one sale. I said, no. well, God's hand is against us because he wants me to go full time in the ministry. Yes. And I sold the company to my head salesman and God just supernaturally blessed us. We got a place at the Costa Mesa Country Club. We exploded to 600 people in six months. And then we went to 2,000 people in the next two years. Yeah. And we became like 3,000 and just kept going. We went television across the nation, even in the Caribbean. I was on a vacation once in the Caribbean, and the little lady comes up to me. She says, oh, my goodness. Oh, you're Pastor Gary. I want you on TV. There you are. There you are. And it was crazy <laughs> but because we became uh, well-known. In three years, we were yeah. well-known, even into the Caribbean. So I'm just saying, when God puts you in a supernatural place where you find your destiny and your calling, he causes all of, all of humanity, everything in the world begins to respond to you. And, you know, he has no problem giving you all the finances you need, putting the right people around you. I, I thank God that he put the right leaders around me. Yes. And when a few of them, uh, people got, you know, they, they became oh, disloyal. God just removed them and then kept the ministry growing with the right people that he had put yes. in place. So God will thoroughly purge his threshing floor. He can take people out and he can put people in. And these prophets on my right and left here, they were brought by God supernaturally. Mm. I mean, if I told you the big ministries that wanted Debbie and yet she mm. felt led to come to Eagle's Nest, yes. And I wasn't giving her a big salary in those days. I don't know if I was giving you anything, but she came just to serve at Eagle's Nest. And God slowly began to manifest her gifting and she got raised up. And now she's sitting at my Amen. left hand here. And uh, same thing with Amos. He came and the Holy Spirit began to minister to him. Yes. And uh, when he went through a period where he was infirm, and had a physical infirmity in his body. Yeah, yes. Uh, some of my pastors, including two that are here today, yeah. uh, Pastor Josue and Debbie, uh, our prophetess, I mean, they both went and visited him and encouraged him. Yes. And here he is now sitting at my God. right hand because God. God has a way of confirming to you when you're called into his kingdom. Apostle, Amen. I wanted to say something. It wasn't about the salary. It was about obedience. So I was obeying the voice of God, and that's what he wanted. And then you started really blessing me, and I kept increasing. So thank you. I love you. Well, every born-again believer has an assignment. They have something that they were created to do that no other person, and I, 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 no other person can fulfill your assignment. That's now, right. I believe sometimes when people refuse to do what God tells them to do, he has to raise up a second, somebody else that will take that. That's true. But God has a perfect assignment for you. And when God puts a, you know, a, a love for someone or something in your life, that's a key to your assignment. Mm. If there's a certain group of people that you just love, you don't know why you love them so much, and it feels in your spirit like, I was created to bless them that becomes your assignment in life. And uh, I wanted to just say, let, let me take a guy, uh, it's a pastor that I knew in the early days of Eagle's Nest and we went to crusades together. Uh, we were on television together. Uh, his name is Mike Bickle. Mm. And I thought I'd tell mm. you about what God did with him because he ra raised up the Kansas City Fellowship yes. and he had a great ministry going, and uh, I think for 17 years, he called it the Metro Christian Center. Mm. So when it was under him, it was the Metro Christian Center in Kansas City. But one year, he discovered that his real assignment was to be a full-time intercessor and to raise up houses of prayer in every major city. He said oh, wow. there was something burning in his heart yes. where he couldn't be happy just preaching messages, but he had a heart for prayer. He loved prayer and fasting. He loved worship. And he had to express that even though he was the pastor of a very large church. 
And Mike started a 24-hour house of prayer, which is a, literally a tabernacle of David to bring revival. And that's in Acts 15, verse 16 and 17. So what Mike discovered is that even though he was successful as a pastor, there was a burning desire in his heart to raise up houses of prayer because he knew that God had to have prayer. God does nothing on the earth except in answer to believing prayer. Yes, yes. And so Mike started these prayer meetings and he literally had created what Acts 15, verse 16 and 17 calls the Tabernacle of David that would bring revival to cities. I don't know if you're aware of this, but God will not move unless there's prayer. Yes. And God will put it on the hearts of men to get prayer going. And in the case of Mike, he saw in Acts chapter 15, verse 16 and 17, that God said he would raise up the tabernacle of David again in the last days. The ta tabernacle of David was a tabernacle of 24-hour prayer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There were prophets that would prophesy in the tabernacle. They had musicians of all sorts that would worship God. And they put together 24-hour praise. And everywhere that the tabernacle of David was set up, a glory anointing was released. And God wow. would sweep through areas and there would just be a mighty move of the Holy Spirit bringing people to God. So oh. we need to get tabernac yeah. tabernacles of David set up because in Acts 15, it says here, in the last days, I will set up the tabernacle of David again yeah. Amen. so that all that are called by my name will come into my kingdom. So here's what happened with Mike, Mike Bickle. He says he turned his church over to Floyd McClung who uh, wrote the book, The Father Heart of God, major Ooh. message. Yeah. And he began staffing his house of prayer with intercessors and skilled musicians because he saw that David had 24-hour praise that was not just by skilled musicians playing their instruments, but it was filled with uh, other musicians, with prophets that would prophesy. And he said, I'm going to set up the tabernacle of David because God says it's coming in the last days. So that was his assignment. He's very successful. He had a very large church, thousands of people. Yes. But this was his assignment from God. And he's standing, and I'll say it one more time, on Amos 9-11 and on Acts 15, verse 16 and 17, where God promises to open the heavens over cities when the tabernacle of David is set up. And Mike calls this harp and bowl. Uh, interesting that he wants to mix, like David's tabernacle did, harp and bowl, which is music, 24-hour music, yeah. with prayer, bowl. Oh, okay. Harp and bowl, music and yeah. prayer. Yes. And this is what David's tabernacle was made of. So it says in Acts 15, verse 16 and 17, if you have doubts that God says this, he says, after this, in the last days, I will return and will build again the tabernacle of David, which has fallen down. And I will build again the ruins thereof, and I will set it up, that the residue of men might seek after the Lord. In other words, revival would come and men would start seeking after the Lord. There would be a hunger in their hearts. And all the Gentiles or unbelievers upon whom my name is called, saith the Lord, who doeth all these things. And that's the word that God gave in the book of Acts. Mike believes this assignment is to plant these houses of prayer in major cities all across this nation for open heavens and harvest of souls. So this is just him obeying the Lord so that every city he sets up, harp and bowl, has an open heaven like David's tabernacle brought, and then we have revival in our major cities. Yes. yes. So I, I just wanted to say that tonight because each of you is a treasure house of gifts. God, when he brought you into his kingdom, knew that there were giftings that he would give you. He would give you a heart for certain people. Yes. He would give you assignments that no other person could fulfill as well as you could. And I just, I, I look at the fact that he brought me into the kingdom. He saw my, my 
potential, and uh, he, he knows that the gifts will flourish. When you're in the wrong place, it seems like you have against a stone wall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Your gifts don't flow. Right. You know, you might be a healing evangelist, but yeah. if you're in the wrong place yeah. and you're not in your assignment, it'll be like you pray for a thousand people and nobody gets healed. Mm -hmm. But when you're in your right assignment, suddenly, and, and I've been in this place where I have to actually have the pastor pull me away from the people at the oh, end yes. of the evening because it's going into the early hours of the morning and people are standing in lines in wanting to be prayed for yes. and being healed. And yeah. I'm like, wow, yeah. when you're in your assignment, it's like heaven flows through you yes. and the power of God is manifested. Amen. Amen. So I would actually tell the pastor, could you come and pull me away at 1.30 in the morning because I've got to have another meeting tomorrow and I can't stay up all night. Right. And, and it's hard for me when people are pulling yeah. on me for me to say no. Oh, exactly. So each of you is a treasure house of gifts and talents and potential blessings for others. But if there's no ground for those gifts to flourish, you're in the wrong place. If you're not mm. seeing your gifts flourish, then you're not in your assignment. Mm. You're in the wrong place. That's but good. the That's good. moment you get into your assignment, everything you touch begins to flow yes. because heaven is flowing through you. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. And don't forget, uh, you need to plant yourself where your gifts can flourish. Debbie came to us because she knew she was prophetic. She was intuitively, she would see things happen before they happened. And she came to Eagle's Nest because in that soil, she flourished. And she began to minister with Mel Kunau and with... Uh, uh, What's his, his daughter? name? Uh, uh, oh, Rob Sanchez. Rob he, Sanchez, he, another he very major. Me, yeah, learn. And Raul Nunez. Oh, yes. I mean, Raul had a mighty prophetic ministry. He also could cast out demons. I mean, people actually levitated yeah, when he prayed for the them. the deliverance was amazing. Uh, he taught me a lot. I served in the prayer. So once a week, he had a big prayer, hundreds of people, and I served. And while I was serving, the anointing came on me. Does that make sense? So, well, I mean, you need to serve somebody before people will serve you. Uh, there, I mean, scriptures tell us that if you have not served someone else, yeah. how's God going to cause people? You're not going to reap what you can only reap what you sow. So when you served other men of God, then God ultimately had people serving you. And that's why you're on this broadcast with us and you yeah. visit places that we send you where there's really oh, yes. ministry to people that can't even come to church. Yes, and that's right. We're even ministering to someone after the service tonight. We're yes, we are. going over to our church building to meet them and minister to them because they saw us on the broadcast and they really needed prayer. So, Well, that's a life and death situation. He's right. Fourth, fourth stage of cancer. We're not going to have that. So we're going to go and pray for him. So plant yourself where your gifts can flourish. Right. Don't go to a church that's so dead, nobody's able to speak in tongues. No prophetic words come forth. Nobody is ever delivered from demonic strongholds. The church doesn't preach the, uh, uh, you know, right. the word of God. Sure. They preach nice little feel-good messages. Mm -hmm. And this is something that can pull you. You know, good is always the enemy of the best. Yes. So I don't want to just have a nice little church that's blessing. Mm. I want to have the church that prepares me and equips me right. for my, my assignment. Well, you know, Apostle, in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 7, verses 24, speaking on what you just mentioned, it says, Brethren, let every man wherein he is called, mm. therein abide with God. And then if you go back to verse 20 of that same chapter, it says, Let every man abide in the same calling wherein he was called. So well, that fits right into what you just uh, mentioned, you know, about your calling and walking in uh, the specifics of your calling. Well, I, I have to say that God has a skillful way. For me, it took three prophets and a little lady coming to yeah. my front door to tell me that making a lot of money with a sign company is not your assignment in life. Right. And man, the Holy Spirit then 
put his hand against my sign company, I couldn't make any money. And my salesman couldn't get any sales. And I finally said, after a month of this, I said, I'm, Lord, I'm going to start a church. I'm going to obey you because the prophets have been telling me that I've got a ministry that I've got to raise up. And I found the Costa Mesa Country Club. And within a month, I was meeting in the country club. God just supernaturally put buildings and people, everything came to me. So God can work all, all things work together for good to those who love God and are called a, according to his purpose. He has a purpose for you. Amen. And everything works together for your good when you get into that place where you're in his purpose for your life. And, uh, you know, there's people today that are refusing to bless God's kingdom. Uh, you'll never, 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 if you won't do what God wants you to do, you will never find your place of destiny. You'll go through life, you'll stand before the judgment seat of God, and God will say, this is what I called you and equipped you, what I was speaking to you through the prophets to do, but you just decided you wanted to rebel and do your own thing. You may, may have wanted to make a lot of money, or you might have wanted to please your grandmother or somebody, but it wasn't my will for your life. You didn't obey me. I was sending the prophets into your life. I was causing situations to actually move you to the place where you could find your assignment, but you kept kicking against the pricks. You didn't want to do what I wanted you to do. So don't forget that, that there's a storehouse of talents in you that nobody else has, and God has made you for a certain specific assignment in life. Obedience and servanthood mm. are the most important to your assignment. Amen. Obedience mm -hmm. and servanthood. This, is, this brings us to another characteristic of your assignment, because we're talking about how to discover your assignment. Provision, now listen closely, provision is only guaranteed at your place of assignment. Provision, finances, everything you need, even the people you need for your assignment are only going to be there at the place of your assignment. If you do not find your place of assignment, the people won't be putting, God won't put the people around you. He wouldn't, he won't put the money in your hands. Uh, money doesn't follow you. It is waiting for you at your place of assignment. That's something that Mike Murdoch used to say. Yeah. Money doesn't follow you. Or people that are money makers would have money everywhere they go. Yeah. It's waiting for you at your place of assignment. Mm. And God brought in, I could, I, if I told you how much money came when I found my assignment, and I didn't have Bible school or all this training, I mean, I was just a sign maker who loved the Lord and loved to preach the word. And I would work late into the mornings on Saturday night preparing a message for that little church that wanted me to preach. And that message would change lives and get people saved. And I got to loving preaching the message as much as preparing it. And God finally said, now you preach the message. I can see that you'll be faithful. So I'm going to shut down your sign company. You're going to have to give it to another. And I'm going to let you be a full-time minister. And, you know, of course, there's that like, oh, well, is God going to take care of my needs? I mean, yeah. but God says your place of provision right. is the place of your assignment. Right. And money came in. I mean, I would say by the second year, we were closing on a million dollars a year. I mean, God brought in such fabulous money to that ministry because we were in our assignment. And when you've got thousands of people going in and you've got a national television program, money was just flowing because I was in my assignment. I think it's really important at this point, people are alert going, what, a million dollars? But you were also a giver. So you gave a lot of food. Our you ministry, gave a lot of we were giving to missions. Mm -hmm. We were helping children's feeding programs. We were sending teams to the nations to have ma massive crusades. We were using that money to do kingdom business. Yes. So it wasn't like we just had a lot of money coming right, to us. Right. 
Yeah, yeah I want to make that clarification. Right. Also, people that were faithful, you'd pay car payments, even house payments. I remember that in the early days. Well, I, I'm not going to brag on what we did, but I will say well, that no. we, were, we were very, we helped a lot of, right. uh, you know, I, I remember World Vision and some of the ministries that we helped in those early days, like the movie showing ministry. Yes, uh, yes. yes. They, they came to me one day and they were telling me that they wanted to show movies in different languages to all the nations. And Eagle's Nest really got behind them and I still give them a check every month. And I'm just saying that God was using the wealth of Eagle's Nest to promote a lot of other ministries. So, I, I mean, I'm not going to sit here and tell you all the ministries we supported, but, you know, oh. you're, you become like a flow. Yeah. Uh, I mean, money comes in and God lets it oh. flow out. Uh, there's another prophet that's very well known, um, the retired fireman, and that's prophet uh, Mark Taylor. And I agree with something that he had said. He said, so when the people give the money, they have the right to know where it's going. So you, you supported the churches and the people in the church that was in need and uh, single moms. And I just think that's really important uh, that our viewers know that. So. Well, we, I, I really dislike people manipulating the church body yes. for money and then living lavishly. Oh yeah. And I, I could, I mean, I'm not going to ever expose ministers, but there are ministers that have preached this prosperity message, but they are living so lavishly. If, if I told you how lavishly wow. they live, and I'm not going to get into that, yeah. but I'm telling you, there's a hireling yes. message yeah. that's actually going out from some ministries. If the money is coming through them and going out to where it's needed, that's different. Yes, exactly. Yeah. But if the buck stops here so I can have this uh, multi-million dollar, right. I'm not even, I, I don't want to even get into it. Yes. But God knows who's using his money for the kingdom. Right. You know, blessings will chase you when you're in God's will, and they will overtake you at your place of assignment. So money is no issue when you get in your assignment from God. Now, money won't happen if you're trying to do things that are not God's will, if you're trying to do your own thing and build your own you know, company mm -hmm. and it's not God's will, he's not going to bless it financially. Right. In 1 Kings 17, God told Elijah to go to the brook Cherith, for God said that he had commanded the Elijah. raven to feed him there. Now, if Elijah had not gone to the brook Cherith, God's provision of water and of the raven feeding him would not have happened. So God always has a place which will be your brook, Cherith, Amen. for the season that you're in. That's good. And why was there provision? That was his assignment to go to that brook. Now, why did the brook dry up? His assignment had changed. <laughs> Listen, continual good. lack and shortages are a clue that you're in the wrong place. I'm going to say that, that again. That is good. Listen. Continual lack and shortages are a clue that you're in the wrong place. You can even be in the wrong ministry, and God will not supply if that is not the assignment for your That's life. Good. That's good. You know, now why did the brook run dry? Elijah, Elijah's assignment had changed. Listen, continual lack and shortages are a clue that, what you, that you're in the wrong place. Uh, Jesus needed money to pay taxes. He sent Peter fishing. Because Jesus had this intimate relationship with God, and he realized that whatever need he had, God would give him a means of bringing in that need. And uh, God, God provided at his place of assignment. The fish, when he sent you know, Peter fishing, the fish Peter caught in his mouth had the money in his mouth. Mm -hmm. So Jesus had yeah. no problem knowing yeah. that as long as he was in his assignment, provision would be made. And God will always provide for you at your place of assignment. Amen. You know, when Mike Bickle obeyed God to start the houses of prayer, 
he found a, a beautiful building in the city he was in, and there were 12 churches in that same city that joined together and said they would financially support the work and the supply. They would supply the worshipers and the teams. Uh, they would supply the intercessors. Remember, he was going to mix worship with intercession. Yes. And so these churches, all these churches banded together, and they wanted to staff his house of prayer. I mean, he wanted to... Ha he, he didn't have to look for all these churches. God started bringing them to him, and the churches agreed to alternate their workers to keep 24-hour prayer and praise in motion. So isn't That's that amazing awesome. that when Mike even left his big church in Kansas City to open up houses of prayer in these different cities, God provided the teams for the praise and for the worship and for the prayer. And I believe that other houses of prayer are going to be raised up in cities yes, all across yes. America Amen. so that God can start flooding the cities yeah. and the states Amen. with the glory of God. Amen. Amen. Uh, I'm just saying, and one other important point, your assignment in life is what sets you apart and makes you different and unique from every other person. I mean, no two people have the same assignment. And you tell me in one sentence what makes the, you different from all the others. If, if, you, if you can't tell me what makes you different, then you don't know your assignment yet. Wow. But something has to be operating in your life that maybe another person couldn't do it exactly the way you do it mm -hmm. because you're assigned to that. If you don't know what sets you apart, then nobody else knows either. <laughs> you know, that means that nobody is pursuing the difference that's in you. That means you're living life unrewarded. I mean, life is only rewarding when you find where God wants you. Yes. And what God will send angels and help them. They will protect you. They will make sure that the right people are brought to you. Yes. The Holy Spirit will surround you with people that have the heart that you have that help you become successful. And then God, because they, they help you, God will raise them up into their own ministries and maybe you will assign them to go. I have many ministers that supported me in my early days and I release them to go out and start ministries in another place. Right. And as long as they stayed submitted and they stayed in that place of honoring me, they flourished. Their yes. ministries grew, sometimes yes. to thousands. Mm -hmm. But those that became disloyal and broke off and thought, we don't need Dr. Gary anymore. You need, you need to have spiritual fathers. Yes. If, if I yes. took you through the Bible, I would show you that everyone in the Bible, even the disciples, had to have Jesus as their yes. spiritual father. If they had broken free of Jesus, they would not have been wow. blessed. They would have not moved in signs Come and on. wonders. They wouldn't have ushered in the glory. I mean, wow. They wouldn't have been there on the, on the day of Pentecost. They wouldn't have had the... I'm just telling you, everybody has to be assigned to someone. And until the person they're assigned to sends them out, they are going to stay in that assignment. But when I got blessed by father ministers and they assigned me and sent me out everything i touched was blessed do you, do you understand yes, that yes yes i don't know let me just close today with a loving warning if you refuse or rebel against your assignment mm. god might permit painful experiences to correct you many christians sense an assignment but they don't seek the lord and say would you send some prophets and confirm it. Would you put circumstances in my life? I was at the point where I feared God enough that I said, would you shut down this sign company that's making a quarter million dollars a year? Would you shut it down on me if this is not what you want me doing? Because I was, I was making money with a sign company, but showing movies at uh, Southern California College and getting a lot of people saved. So I was using the money I was making to show Christian movies and to get a lot of people into the kingdom of God. And I thought, maybe this is my assignment. But God began to turn my assignment and 
actually shut me down as a sign company and said, now I want you to go into the ministry. I've been training you under another man for a few years. You've been preaching for him at the nine o'clock service every Sunday, but now I want you to have your own ministry. And that's where I started launching out to start Eagle's Nest. We started it as a Bible study. It, it grew to a hundred and some people in a home group. And then we decided to look for a building and God gave us the Ebel Club. And the Ebel Club, we grew to uh, uh, 1,700 people there at Ebel Club. Then he launched us from the Ebel Club over to building our own church in a, a building over in Santa Ana called the Edinger Building. It was on Edinger Street. The city said, we don't give permits to churches to meet in industrial buildings. We went before the city council. They voted us down. But we asked for a variance, and we went back and fought again. I brought all my intercessors, and they prayed in the spirit. Yeah. And suddenly, the city council changed its mind, gave us a variance, and let us meet in that building. And we grew to thousands of people in that building. That's so awesome. God has a way of yes. making everything work for yes. you. Right. All things work together for good right. to those who love God and are called according Amen. Right. to his purposes yes. for them. Amen? Amen. So, you know... If you refuse to re and rebel against God's assignment, God might permit painful experiences to correct you. Mm. I mean, that's what happened to Jonah. He was a good example. Yes, yes. In Jonah 1 verse 2, God told him, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. You're my prophet. Go over there and cry against their wickedness. And instead, Jonah, he didn't want to go there. He fled towards Tarshish. He went down to Joppa. He boarded a ship and paid the fare. Verse 4 tells us in Jonah 1 verse 4, But the Lord sent a great wind into the sea. I'm telling you, if you get out of your assignment, God can send a big wind against you. Everything, every circumstance will blow against you because you are fighting. You're kicking against the bricks. He sent a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea so that the ship was like to be broken. That's what God may do to you, to the circumstances of your life, if you're running from God's assignment and purposes. Jonah was thrown overboard and spent three miserable days in the belly of a great sea creature till he accepted his assignment and said, Lord, I'm going to do what you told me to do. Because yes. I'd rather go to Nineveh and die than to be eaten up by these juices in this big and fish. fish yeah. Amen. I'm, I'm just saying, don't forget, pain and hardships are corrective. God says he chastens those whom he loves. Yes, yes. And he scourges every son and daughter whom he receives. So don't expect life to be easy, but it will get much easier if you're in your assignment and you're doing what God's called you to do. In Psalms 119, verse 71, David proclaims, It is good for me that I have been afflicted that I might learn thy statutes. I have oh, learned so obedience good. by the affliction so that I've good. gone through. I would like to pray for you yes. because the Holy Spirit has an assignment on your life yes. that you alone can fulfill. Your assignment first should be to someone who you minister for, somebody that you help in their assignment, and then they will, if they're prophetic at all, they will even sense when God is starting to send you out and giving you an assignment, but God wants you to first prove yourself in being faithful in that which is another man's. And then God says, I will give you that which is your own. And I want to pray for that right now, Father. Yes. We just believe the Holy Spirit is going to use hardships and broke, you know, closed doors and everything necessary to stop us from doing those things that will not count into eternity. Only that which is done for your kingdom will last into eternity. We want to use our strength and everything, our talents, everything we have to fulfill your... I'm just believing, Lord, that anyone watching this today, if they say, Lord, here am I, send me, show me what I'm supposed to do. I believe within the next couple of weeks, they're going to start seeing God directing their steps. Maybe a prophetic word. Maybe they'll be in a situation where... They'll have people that tell them of a need and their heart goes out to that need. Maybe it's to take care of the, 
the people that are on the streets that are the homeless and so forth. But it might be something, and it won't always be something that you're going to do for the rest of your life, but it's got to be a proving. You've got to prove to the Lord that what He asked you to do, you will do. And I believe that the Holy Spirit will use pain and hardships and closed doors to make sure you don't go through the wrong door. I just decree right now that you will be blessed, 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 and all your needs will be met out of His riches and glory when you find your place of assignment. We decree it and bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So God wants us to uh, just remember that this life is only a short, maybe 60, 80, maybe even 100 years. But then we go into eternity and we'll rejoice and we'll be talking for the rest of eternity about what God called us to do while we were back in this earth life. Right? Yes. So only that which is done for Jesus Christ will last. And I, I want to just encourage those of you that are watching today. <laughs> you are, you're unique. There's no two snowflakes that are the, alike. And God has not created two people that are exactly That's alike. Right. That's right. And nobody else is like you because you are, you are loved. God, the Bible says, he knew you, Jeremiah. I knew you when you were still in your mother's womb. And I called you even in the womb to be a Amen. prophet to the nations. Yes, yes. That Amen. means while you were still in your mother's womb, yes. God had an assignment on your life. And you've got to find that assignment. And it's not hard. God will put prophets in your path. He'll put circumstances. You just have to say, Lord, here am I. Send me and put everything together to show me where I should be. Right. And that, there's a scripture that confirms that in, uh, what is it, uh, 1 Timothy 4, 14. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, mm -hmm. which was given thee by prophecy with the laying on of hands of the presbytery. So that just confirms what well, you just spoke Every one of us needs to, you know, I remember going before the presbytery and the prophets and having them minister over me. When the timing was right, Bishop Bill Hammond was visiting my church speaking. He was our prophet. And we were getting more and more as his children. We were having schools of the prophets and we were becoming more, we would go every year to the the October uh, uh -huh. conference, the IGAP, IGAP, and and I mean we were letting the prophets minister in our services, and Bishop Hammond got me in an elevator one time because I I wanted to honor the prophet. I I took him up to L.A. to buy him some suits, mm -hmm. and uh, he wore a lot of leisure suits in those days. And I said I want to get you some real suits, you know. <laughs> and we were going up in an elevator, and he said. Gary, I would like to make you a doctor and honor you as a prophet. Hmm. I said, a doctor? Wow. Uh, he, said, he said, yes, I feel that God wow. wants me to give you a doctorate. And I said, uh, I don't need a doctorate. I'm just Pastor Gary. I thought I was being humble. <laughs> and he said, when you write a book and they, write, they see Dr. Gary Greenwald, when it gets overseas, it will That's sell true. like candy because oh, yes. everybody wants to hear from doctors. Yes. And he gave me several other reasons why I should accept his doctorate. But I'm just saying that he honored me with a doctorate, uh, wrote my books. Uh, another pastor back east saw the miracles that mm. I was having in my crusades. And he had a, a school and he gave me another doctorate. So I had two doctorates. And God that lets your gift, the Bible says yes. your gift will open doors for you. Amen, yes. And bring you before great men. Right. So I'm not bragging on my being a doctor, but I'm saying God knew that that would give me access to the nations. Yes. And when they would advertise that a Dr. Gary Greenwell was coming to Brazil, for instance, man, the crowds would be awesome. And the healings, they, they just seemed to receive I'm, I'm just saying that God wants you to have his blessing. Let me, uh, let me do something today, too, that uh, I want you to be under the blessing. Yes. Amen. And I have really come to the conclusion that I must teach people that when you honor the Lord with the first fruits of all your increase, 
that God opens doors to you. He says, see if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing yes. that is so great you can't receive it all. Yeah. And I quite frankly, I'm going to just say honestly, I have never met a man or woman who doesn't tithe that is in their assignment and doing great things for God. It's like money has become their God and God is second place. Choose this, this day who you will serve, God or mammon, money. And so I want to say that one of the first things we do to prove that we are totally under God's assignment is we need to say whatever comes into the kingdom through my life, I'm going to give a 10 part to you. So in the laws of prosperity, first fruits is part of God's kingdom. Uh, let me just say every one of you is in the office of a steward. So what is a steward? Literally, a steward is the guardian of the interests of another. You are guarding the interests of Father God. Mm. The steward owns nothing, but is careful to guard, protect, and increase the property of the one whom he serves. It is true that we are stewards of our time, our talents, our strength, our ability, as well as our money. But our faithfulness in tithing is in reality the greatest test of our stewardship because the fleshly nature desires money more than anything else that could ever be exalted. You know, the word says, choose this day who you will serve, God or money. I mean, it's pretty simple. And yet many Christians even choose money over God's assignment. In Luke 16, verse 1 and 2, we see God called a rich man with a steward. And he, Jesus, said also unto his disciples, there was a certain rich man which had a steward, and the same steward was accused unto his rich owner that he had wasted his goods. The steward had selfishly used the master's goods for himself. Now this applies to many Christians that when they get blessed with a big paycheck or a bonus, it's not like, I need to give God his part. It's like, now I'm going to buy a better car. I'm going to get a new wardrobe. And the Bible, this steward was doing exactly that. He was use, using his master's goods for himself. And he, God, called him and said unto him, How is it that I hear this of thee? Give an account of thy stewardship, for thou mayest no longer be a steward. I'm not going to let you be a steward in my kingdom any longer. So immediately we see how important Jesus says it is for us to be unselfish tithers who are faithful stewards over God's goods. And when a faithful steward realizes that the method of tithing is literally that of taking one-tenth of his income and depositing it in the Lord's treasury, he will, he'll be glad to do it instead of feeling that whoever appeals to him for the work of God is trying to get his money away from him. So rather, he will feel that everyone who presents to him the interests of God's kingdom is helping him to find a way to discharge his obligation to God. So when I take an offering in our church, I don't push tithes real strongly, but I find that people that really love God and know that they are stewards in his kingdom, they know that it's expected of them to give their tithe yes. to the church. I, I, you know, we have a, a lady, this is from way back in uh, 87. I have a, a testimony. Oh. You know, I have every offering call I've ever done since uh, the early wow. 80s. Can you believe wow. that? That's amazing. I have these big books of my tithing calls. But Donna Jackson, and she and our and her husband are ministers with their own ministry uh, over in another nation, and they're very successful. But in these days, uh, she let me just read what her testimony says. She said there were such blessings that she had experienced through tithing. She said she learned through Eagle's Nest that God blesses faithful tithe. Uh, stu stewards and this started in 1987 when they first came to Eagle's Nest uh, 
Donna says, a little more than a year ago, this is in 1987, I learned the importance of tithing from attending Eagle's Nest. I applied the concept at every conceivable opportunity. When I started tithing, I was working part-time for $100 a week. Remember, this is 1987. And going to school full-time. So she was making $100 a week working full-time. I mean, working part-time so she could go to school. And let me add that God also healed Donna of a cracked tailbone when she started tithing. So she knew there was an instant uh, reward for her tithing. And God also uh, introduced her to Todd, whom she married in our ministry. So she got a husband. She got healed. Uh, she started pr prospering. But uh, she continued to tithe till she was making $300 a week in a new job. She continues by the world standard. She says, I couldn't afford to tithe, but praise God, I had lost the world's mentality. I continued to tithe before I even paid my bills. Then I was approached by my supervisor after three months on the job, and she promoted me over two other people, and my income went from $300 to $400 a week. Remember, she's working part-time on the side. $300 a, $400 a week. And she says, I realize that tithing works. And remember, this is back in 1987. Now listen to what Jesus said, and I close with this, about faithful stewards. Luke 12, verse 42 and 43 in the Amplified. Someday God is going to put his faithful, unselfish stewards in charge of ruling the nations and distributing food, clothing, material wealth to those of his household. This is when Jesus comes back and sets up his rule upon the earth. This is when he, we're ruling and reigning with him on the earth. There's a thousand year reign, we know, but we, we believe that the, I don't know exactly if we're going to stay on the earth forever or if God's got a kingdom he's building, uh, beyond the earth, but we said we'll, we'll rule and reign with him for a thousand years. And here's what he says, and this is in Luke 12, 42 and 43. And the Lord said, who then is that faithful steward, the wise man whom his master will set over those in his household service to supply them their allowance of food at the appointed time? Blessed, happy, and to be envied, is that servant whom his master finds so doing when he arrives. At his second coming, if he finds you a faithful steward, a tither, he said, you will be blessed. Truly, I tell you, he will set him in charge over all his possessions. When Jesus comes to rule and reign on the earth, the faithful tithers, the stewards, are going to be the ones that rule and reign with him, sitting on thrones yeah. and distributing the finances to the nations. I'm, I'm just saying, money really is important to God. It is. Choose this day who you will serve, God or money. Yes. Choose God or choose money. I, you know, I'm preaching a little harder today on tithing because I believe we're getting closer to the coming of Jesus, and God is distributing authority to those that are faithful tithers. So it's not just about money and having financial provision. It's the authority that God gives to those that are faithful tithers. He puts them over all his house. So I just pray for you right now, if you're watching today, that you would really settle that with God, that you have to choose this day who you will serve, God or money. And if you're not giving God his portion of your money, then you're serving money. Mammon has become your God. And I just want to bless you today and say there will be provision, mirac miracles of provision, unexpected provision. God takes care of every ministry and every minister who makes him Lord of Lords and King of Kings. I just bless you right now. I command money to chase yes. you and overtake you. you. I command provision to come in. Yes. I command that the angels will go to work 
and bring yes. you all that you need so that you can fulfill your destiny, your assignment in life. I just bless you in Jesus' name. And I just see with the Holy Spirit, he says that the miracle is on its way. I'm sensing that even now. I thank you with the angelic being that's coming to bring your breakthrough. And the Lord says this, while you are speaking, Apostle, thank you for that, for what you said, because I know that you're being led of the Holy Spirit. And Lord, I just thank you, Lord, because you said, uh, King David, this is 1 Samuel 30 and 7. Six before that it says but David strengthened himself in the Lord his God so strengthen yourself in the Lord your God make it personal and then ask the Holy Spirit what you would what you would um, what you would give um, I, I heard a teaching one time and I thought it was so amazing because I always got stuck in that area I knew about tithing 10% and then offerings above the 10% and uh, the Lord's like let me just speak to your heart I'll tell you what to give. So the 10%, yes, uh, I've been doing that since I was 14. God has always, always provided my needs supernaturally. And so, Father, I just thank you for that. And I thank you, you're, you're faithful, Lord. You're always, always faithful. And then this he told me to give to you. And his word, Philippians 4, 6, Be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart and your mind through Jesus Christ. So, let him know what your request is. He And I just see like um, uh, it's going to be through your mailbox. It's going to be uh, wire transfers. It's going to be presents. It's going to be deliveries. It's going to be, be, be people you don't know, people you do know. Don't limit God how he wants to bless you. It's a supernatural. It's like God is supernatural. Well, when you're faithful to God and you help others, you know, I think that the the thing that touches God's heart the most is when we take somebody that's made in the image of God and we give to them. When you give to a homeless person, yes. when you help somebody, like you take some money every month to a little lady that's in one of these little rest homes that yeah. she used to be a, a minister, right? and yet nobody is visiting her now, so you go and visit her, and we send money to her every week. Mm -hmm. So. You know, Bible says there's a lot of blessings to those that take care of the widows and orphans. Yes, Apostle. And oh, so you just said it. We've learned that it's not just giving your tithe, which is legal, to the Lord, but right. helping others. And you know, we we are constantly looking for places to bless the hungry. Absolutely. And uh, you, you've been very. I, I thank God for you because you take my little cash to that little lady <laughs> in that yes. home. Yes. And I don't have to go because I'm a little busy. And uh, I mean, she knows that I love her because oh, I yes, keep sending that money. So, you know, God is always going to be speaking to your heart. Somebody that yeah. he brings to your mind that that person is really struggling. I want you to become my hand extended to them. Show them how much I love them and take them something out of the excess of what I'm giving you. Yes. And God will always, I mean... Uh, there's always someone that God will put in your path. Uh, I'm just saying it's hard for me to even throw away letters that come to me from these feeding ministries it's and so, yeah. from all these Bible, uh, I mean, these ministries that are doing the work of God. You have to know your assignment. I mean, you could give to everybody and you run dry, but you don't want to do that. You want to be intentional, right? And thank you for teaching us about assignments and ask the Lord. You have not because you ask not. You have not because you ask not, James 4. Ask him where he wants you to give, how much he wants you to give. But ministry is right outside our doors. I mean, I am telling you, more often than not, people come to me and say, I'm hungry. Can you buy me food? I always say yes because I feel God watching me, and I know that's his heart. He wants you to have an opportunity to feed those in need, but then also minister to them. Tell them that there is a God that loves them, a Jesus that saves. So ministry is all around us. You don't have to actually really look for it, but then you need to know formal ministry. You need to ask the Lord where he would have you be and where to serve. And so... You know the word that hits my heart? Uh, God says, if you have not been faithful with the unrighteous mammon, mm. with money, 
who will grant to your trust the true riches mm. of my kingdom? Wow. So if you're not a faithful giver of tithes and helping others, then how can God say, now I'm going to give you a major office in my kingdom, my ministry. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give you an assignment that's going to touch thousands of people. But if Jesus says you don't even help your own church, you don't even help, you, you know, the, the people that are sick and people that are struggling and can't even get a meal in this crisis. Yeah. Oh, yes. If you're not taking care of them, how, who's going to grant to your trust the true riches of healings and miracles yes. and authority over demons mm. and all that God wants Come you to on. move in? If you've not been faithful with the unrighteous mammon, who will grant to your trust the true riches of my Amen. kingdom? Now, you can give the information is on your Facebook. It gives you our mailing address. If you would like to send a check and be a blessing, ask the Lord. He's going to let you know. And uh, our mailing address is Eagles Nest Ministries, P.O. Box 15044, Santa Ana. Just in time, Pastor Josue. Thank you. Uh, 92735. I could never remember the zip code. 92735. That's Eagles Nest Ministries, P.O. Box 15044. 44 Santa Ana 92735 and if you would like to give by credit card this number I'm not sure how much longer we'll have this number available but for the next week for sure uh, you can text uh, 949-433-4912 949-433-4912 and we just this is my favorite part I always say this we just bless the people. We, we speak and prophesy multiplication in your vineyard, in your garden. Uh, Lord, I just thank you for multiplying even the food supply so you can bless other people, have people over for dinner and bless them, be a blessing. And then also uh, debt free. I just want to declare and decree debt free in Jesus name uh, for those who are in debt. And the Lord will do it supernaturally. It's unbelievable the testimonies we've received about that remember a uh, pastor adolfo if you're watching remember that second deed of trust just kind of mysteriously uh, was deleted i mean that's unheard of i was in real estate unheard of and so father we just thank you for the miraculous we're not going to limit you lord and what you want to do for your children and so father we just uh by the fa well, father's name uh and and the blessing in the word number 6 22 through 25 i we just speak the blessings we pronounce the blessings of the lord over you to um to follow you to uh, you know i you know whenever i hear uh the one scripture about how God overtakes us. I see him wrestling us. And it's funny because we can't out wrestle God. We cannot out give God. So just, you know what, just out of honoring Father God, uh, go ahead and give as you're led to do so. So Apostle Gary, now it's time to minister well, for a little while. We, we haven't tried this before, but we're going to see on <clears throat> our special prompter here, uh, we're going to have some people give testimonies, and uh, Debbie's going to get those and read them to us. But we felt led, let me just say it again if you've tuned in after we started this broadcast, we felt led of the Spirit to respond to some of your comments and requests yeah. uh, as we're live on this broadcast. So if you have a special comment, a request, or you have a need for prayer, or you need a prophetic word on a situation or decision in your life, just send us a comment on Facebook Live while this broadcast is airing. Yeah. We're going to get all your comments on Facebook Live. And if we don't get to you, we're going to pray about responding in our next broadcast. We're going to see some of these that we really want to respond to. And our broadcasts are on Sundays at 630 and on Thursdays at 7 o'clock. So we look forward to hearing from you, and yes. maybe we can minister yeah. to those who got a hold of us now on Facebook okay. Live. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to give uh, the one testimony we can minister, maybe kind of go back and forth as the Spirit leads, leads the Holy Spirit. Sure. So we just honor the Holy Spirit. We thank you for your ministry right now. Lord, thank you. I thank you for your presence. Lord, I declare and decree an open heaven, and I thank you, Father for the release of your glory right now. Oh boy, I sense that like a shift. It just all changed from teaching to glory. Okay, so here, Terry Gonzalez, it says, 
God is good. When you prayed over my sis before this pandemic, I went to have a follow-up appointment the following day, and it was gone. Thank you. Praise God. Is that Terry? She's part of our... Used to work for us? No, 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 okay. no. You're thinking that's another Terry. Okay, that was another Terry. Right. This okay. is this is a Terry that comes to our church. She came to Marie Callender's oh, when you okay. were doing the teaching that's Terry. and training. Okay. Uh huh. She's so precious. Thank you, Terry, for your testimony. And then I know there's another one from Steve Kerwin. Do you can you see that? <clears throat> Do you want to read it? Steve Kerwin, who's a minister up north. Pastor Steve Kerwin. Pastor right. Steve Kerwin. Yes. Uh, you know, he has been relating to Eagle's Nest for many years. He said, I just wanted to share an update about my son Caleb that you prayed for Thursday night. He had been diagnosed with a gastrointestinal reflux disease which caused his esophagus to swell. Thus he found it hard to, hard to, can you bring it down a little bit? Yeah. He, he found it hard where did where did it left leave off That's here? Right here. Right here. Hard to breathe. Mm -hmm. He had gone to urgent care four times, but since Thursday night, he has been doing well. He is back to work and sleeping well at night, and we just want to give glory to God. Amen. So Steve Kerwin, uh, we prayed for him. So this tells me that God wants to honor our prayers, even on live television here. Yes, and so we just thank you, Lord, for Caleb, because I know the Lord, the Lord there's visitations coming from the Lord for Caleb, and in fact, the whole family, uh, your whole family is called uh, Pastor Steve. You're just increasing. He's faithful. He's just, he's one of your ordained ministers, Apostle Gary, you know, for many years. I believe Steve is one of those that not only watches us, but has submitted to our covering and oversight, Yes. and because of that, the anointing comes down the Bible says over the head to the shoulders, down to the skirts of the garment. And the Lord is showing me that he's going to start moving in some real signs and wonders. Yes. It'll be like every time he ministers to his people, there'll be a presence of God that will suddenly start healing the people. And he's going to start having to write down all the healings because he's going to be uh, kind of overtaken. It's going to be surprising to him how many people are getting healed. Yes. So we decree over yes. Steve Kerwin that Amen. the Holy Spirit, Pastor Steve, yes. we decree the Holy Spirit yes, is Lord. giving you a fresh anointing yes, and Lord. that you'll be one of the forerunners before this glory starts covering ministers and ministries across the nation. Amen. Amen. I just see Steve, that he even received for his son Caleb and because he received the prophetic word right. and the prayers that we released, he received for his son Amen. and there's always already been a, a quick healing on Caleb and we decree that he will also have people coming to his ministry to receive healings from yes. mental yes. physical and emotional problems yes God is going to just give him a new anointing for yes. that in Jesus name yes. and I just see it being quick and swift and like instant, like you're going to move into miracles, uh, Pastor Steve. You've actually been praying and entertaining this and talking to your father about this, Father God. And so, Father, I just thank you that the, it's like an anointing, a mantle that's on you. It's being um, transferred to, he, because of his faithfulness. And even when things have been super rough, I mean, in many, many ways, and you kept trusting God, God loved that. He loved that about you, that you put your full trust in him, Proverbs 3, 5 through 8. And uh, Prophet, we're going to say uh, something? Just, um, the name, just letting you know, Pastor Kerwin, that the name uh, Caleb is not by accident. Um, the Lord is saying that Caleb will be one that will bring forth a good report. Amen. And the Lord said he's going to bring a good report even to this generation. And the Lord says even that which the enemy has intended, has intended against him, the Lord says, I am even now turning into good. For I have called him, I have anointed him, and I am blessing right now through him even the words that he speak. The Lord says you will begin to see, Caleb, you will begin to see with eyes of the Spirit. Amen. You will hear with the, eye, with the ears of the Spirit. And the Lord says, I have called you. And you have uh, known this now for some times, but the Lord says you have dismissed it to some point. The Lord says, I'm bringing it back. 
respond to that which I've placed within you. And the Lord says, you will do mighty works in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord says, the nations is waiting for you. The Lord says, there are a group of people, yes, young people, lives will be touched, lives will Amen. be changed. The Lord says, many will come to know me because of that which you will do in my mighty name, says the Lord. Amen. Good Amen. word. Good word. Amen. Uh, 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 uh huh. Sure, but just a moment because I'm seeing something here. Remind me, Pastor Josue. So here it says Evangelist Joel. Joe Gokul. G O K O O L. He Shalom from Trinidad and Tobago. And uh, I don't know if we know him. We might know him. But it's good that we don't because I don't. I don't remember. But I'm just sensing that we're supposed to, um, we are supposed to minister to Evangelist Joe. Well, any guy named Go Cool, I mean. Because uh, he goes and he's cool. God named him. <laughs> he's he's going to be carrying that cool anointing. Yes. Oh, I like that. <laughs> well, we just agree for Joe right now. He's an evangelist. Yes. And he's after souls, yeah. but God's going to give him more healings than he's yes, ever seen yes, before. Yes, Because healing. Name. You know, Jesus didn't just go out and preach the gospel to the That's masses. Right. He right. preached with signs following. Amen. And he healed all that were sick and oppressed, yeah. of, you know, oppressed of mm -hmm. the devil. Mm -hmm. And we just decree that Joe is going to get a new faith. It'll Come be on. like yeah. every time he spends time personally with yeah. the Lord, this faith anointing is going to come on him, and he's going to know that when he decrees something, the Bible says, decree a thing, yes. Amen. and it's established unto you. And Joe Gokul is going to be supernaturally decreeing things in Trinidad, and people Amen. are going to start getting healed. Even friends of theirs that get around them are going to get healed because the anointing will be a, so strong on them yes. that when they go and testify to something they received, it's going to get off on others. Amen. Yes. So, you yes. know what I see with Joel? Father, I just thank you for what I see right now. It can be very intense, but I see a new authority. Revelation knowledge, revelation on the authority that you have in Jesus name and the blood of Jesus. Father, I just thank you for Joel. I thank you for this new mantle that's coming upon Evangelist Joe, Joe, you need to go see someone we know that they are ordained under Apostle Gary, and that's Apostle Darren Rambley and Prophet Rohan Rambley and Jessica, married to Darren Rambley. They, you need to connect with them if you don't already know them. And I see you guys praying, and I see revival in Trinidad, and I see where God is going to show you things like you're a seer. And the Lord, you know, what I see right now is... Um, you praying and breaking the witchcraft, the powers of witchcraft uh, from the witch doctors where they pronounce curses over the people in Trinidad and the Lord says, I will not have it anymore. And the Lord says, for I am strong. I shall show you my glory. And the Lord says, he shall clothe you with his anointing and glory in this hour to show forth God's power. So Father, we just bless you and we thank you for revival in Trinidad and Tobago. And Father, we just, we're excited to hear what your, the feedback that you're going to have for us. But God is just, he's jealous over you, Joe. He's jealous over you. And he says, don't worry about those things. There's some things you're really concerned with. And the Lord says, give it to me. I will handle that. I will handle those situations. You know, God gives his angels charge over us so that we don't even dash our foot against a stone. And I was seeing that Joe, he has a kind of a simple childlike faith and he, he's going to grab hold of the fact that angels have been assigned to him. Yes. And that no evil shall befall him. Right. Amen. And right. God is going to actually cause those that come against him, yeah. he's going to backlash against them with angelic assignments against them. Yeah. And the, if a witch doctor or somebody come comes against him that is of a Sombra. weird, yes. strange Sombra. faith, you know, yeah. some kind of, uh, I, I don't ungodly religion over mm -hmm. there, Anyone that comes against Joe, it's going to come right back on them, Return. but a hundredfold. It'll be, 
Yeah, the Bible says you'll sow the wind, but you'll reap the whirlwind. Hallelujah. And God's going to put that anointing on him that if they sow against him anything, not only will he be protected, but it will reap the whirlwind back on them. Amen. So God is going to just give him the ability to pray for others yes. so that he flows. Yeah. Apostle, your spiritual daughter uh, is watching uh, Kelly. Prophetess Kelly, Kelly Brooks, Brooks yes, is watching. Your spiritual daughter and your spiritual son, um, Apostle Stephen Kelly. Well, and Kelly. you know, Kelly came to Eagle's Nest many years ago, and I think the greatest thing that I was able to introduce her to was the baptism in the Holy mm. Spirit. And it transformed her life. And she began to live all out for God. Uh, she just really sought the Lord. Uh, she ministered to some of the ministers. And then she met Stephen Brooks, mm -hmm. who is one of our, he's our spiritual son now and goes around the world. He has miracles everywhere yes. he goes. If you get into it's Kelly's true. husband's ministry, oh, yes. uh, there's a fragrance. When he comes into your ministry, all these different fragrances break forth because God has all the fragrances in the Bible. And it's just a sign that God's presence is there. So we just believe that Kelly is going to pray with a new fervor, even for her own That's family. There's going to be a new fervor that comes from her, and miracles are going to come much quicker. That there's an Amen. assignment on her to take her to a new Amen. level Amen. of miracles coming from her prayers. Because sometimes she begins to defer to Steve and think he's the minister, but she is just as much a minister, oh, yes, she is. and she is one of those that's going to have women seeking her to get her blessing because Amen. she's going to carry this anointing and give it to others that are faithful. Amen. Now, Prophet, you're going to say something. Yeah, um, I want to go back to Joe. Uh, is it Goku? Yes. Joe, okay, Joe, um, even before, I guess, uh, we saw your name on there, the Holy Spirit had given me the name Joe. I didn't get a last name, but I had this scripture for you. It's just in Psalms 112, 1 through 3. It says, Praise you the Lord. Blessed is the man that feared the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commandments. His seed shall be mighty upon earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in his house, and his righteousness endureth forever. So the Lord is saying right now, this is for you, that scripture. And the Lord has said he's heard your prayer. You've Amen. been calling in finances. You've also been calling in uh, doors. You've been calling for doors to open. The Lord says, I am causing those doors to open unto you. And the Lord says, the word that I'm leaving with you right now is increase, increase, increase. Amen. The Lord says, yes, I am faithful. I am your God. And the Lord says, I will provide in every area. Amen. Says the king. Um, Pastor Josue, who are you referring to? Uh, there was a Blanca Aguirre. She wanted to work with direction, but there's a couple others too. Oh, let's go with the one, though. Blanca, since you Blanca said Blanca. Aguirre. Okay. Uh, we'll do, take one at a time. So Blanca Aguirre? You passed her. You see her? I saw Blanca there for somewhere. Uh, Blanca Aguirre? Mm -hmm. she, just, she wanted a word. Oh, there. Oh. Well, that's her name. <laughs> <laughs> well, Blanca. God knows her. The Holy Spirit is going to give you a new kind of discernment mm -hmm. where you get around people and you discern the spirit thereof. Mm -hmm. The Bible says Jesus did not commit himself to many, for he knew what spirit they were of. Yes. Mm -hmm. And God's going to give you not only discernment, but you're going to know when people's hearts are broken and they're heavy hearted. Yes heavy laden the bible yes, calls it yes. and you're going to begin to pray and a spirit of joy is going to take them over mm -hmm. you're going to actually be surprised how full of joy people get that you pray over and you're going to just simply pray a simple prayer of faith and say lord i want you to bless them i want you to show them how much they mean to you how precious they are and the minute you begin to pray blessing over anyone there's going to be a drunken joy that comes on them. I don't understand this, but I see people getting inebriated, mm. some of them almost falling over. She might have to catch them, but the Holy wow. Spirit is going to be very real when she prays for anyone and blesses them in the midst of their hardships. So I decree that over you right now. Blanca, you are blessed of the Lord. And you know what I see for Blanca? I see um, angels all around you, Blanca, um, 
I don't know. I, I feel like you've had some real um, danger at times in your life. And the Lord wants to reassure you he's with you. Uh, Isaiah 41, 10, he says, do not be fear. Do not fear for I am with you. But then I'm getting Psalms 103 because the Lord says that you've been asking for some things from him and believing for some things. So in Psalms 103, that whole chapter belongs to you. And so it starts off saying, bless the Lord, all my soul and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, all my soul. I see that you're a worshiper and forget not all his benefits. He said, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases. And the Lord said, stop right there. The Lord wants you to believe for people's uh, miracles. So if you know that somebody has been diagnosed uh, with anything, any medical thing, and they've lost hope, well, the Lord says, I put hope inside your heart. And the Lord says, I've given you a heart of miracles and to speak miracles. You've always wanted to step out. And the Lord says, the time is now. Get to know my word and just repeat what I say. So you say, in the name of Jesus, diabetes must leave your, your body in the name of Jesus and level out the sugar. And whatever God gives you, the Holy Spirit is going to help you. He's the one that does help you. He anoints you. And so you, I see that you have a heart for people. You have a heart for people that are ill. You've just not known what to do about that. Apostle Gary, you have a lot to say about that because you move in signs and miracles. Well, I'm seeing for Blanca that when people she's praying for mm -hmm. start getting inebriated lightheaded yeah. uh, drunk in the spirit yes it's a sign to them and to her that god wants to heal them mm -hmm. so anything that she prays for she can command evil spirits to be bound and cast out because yes. jesus said you must first bind the strong man yes. and she can apply the blood of jesus and emotionally or physically any disease, God's going to start healing people. And Blanca is going to say, the Lord has released to me Amen. a healing anointing. Yes. And now his sign is that people start getting oh. inebriated and drunk. And it's a sign to me that God wants them healed physically That's as good. well as emotionally. That's so good. get ready, Blanca. This is going to be a exciting. You're going to be calling in, telling us about <laughs> some of the people that got yes. healed. And many testimonies. I see that. Okay. Okay. So here's another person. Um, she's responding a lot. Deborah Ferris. Deborah Ferris, I knew you when I was in junior high school, and I've not seen you since then. I know you've connected with Minister Diane, but this one here used to protect me from the gangs. Are you sure it's the same Deborah? I think so. Deborah Ferris, I think so. She needs to let me know. No, Minister Diane told me I just not seen her or talked to her since junior high school. Well, Dara, so. De uh, Deborah Ferris, right? Yes. You know, God's literally, he gives you little signposts. He doesn't just come out and an angel blurts out, you know, <laughs> thus saith the Lord. But when we begin to see those little signposts that God is with us, yes. he wants us to then find the assignment that he's yes. giving us. Yes. So uh, even as she protected you at one time, she did. the Lord is going to give her an ability to protect the weak, Amen. the people that are cast out, the people that are hungry. Yes. The, I mean, even the homeless are going to be suddenly supernaturally provided for. If she prays for a homeless person, Ooh. angels are going to be assigned to bring much provision yes. and miraculous. Yes. I mean, the things are going to start. She's going to start releasing God's angelic forces to come and work mm. for the Lord to bring those people that she blesses you know, that's why the Bible says if you Come bless on. someone, right. the yes. blessing will chase them and overtake them. Right. So I, I just believe that her reward is to have an angelic, uh, what do they call it? They, they come to help you. They're assistance. Oh, assistance. Assistance. Yeah. And they're going to, I mean, I just really feel a lot of an angelic activity tonight. Yeah. yeah. So she's going to just really call us again with some. Or text us. Show us mm -hmm. some things that have happened that she has gotten into a new assignment to bring the blessing of the Lord and the angelic yeah. intervention. Yes. So that, I mean, we're not using the angels enough. I remember Norval Hayes used to say, most angels stand at attention around most Christians because they're not commanding them. Oh, wow. They're, they're yeah. not giving them assignments. They're not decreeing God's word because yes. angels can only go 
to bring the word of God to pass. Yes. Yeah. So uh, give yeah. our angels some assignments. Yes, there. and I was getting Deborah, for you. She did, she did respond. She said, wow, praise God. Oh, okay. So, Deborah, we're not done. Okay, so I haven't talked to you since we were, what, 13, 14 years old? I'm 57 now. That's a, Do the math. That's been many, many years. And I'm glad I didn't talk to you because what I'm getting right now is that you, what you didn't realize way back then that God was preparing you. He was preparing you to be prophetess, Deborah in the Bible, Judges 4, read about yourself. You need to read about yourself. And you've wondered, and you've wondered, why am I this way? I don't tolerate things. I get angry. Well, there's a holy anger that God gives us. When someone is being bullied, someone's being abused, all these things are just not right. And the Lord says that I've caused you to, to hold a standard, a, a standard from the kingdom of God. And so God, he's, I just see favor all around you, Psalms 512, like a shield of favor and protection all around you. And he is calling your children too, for you've been believing for your children. And the Lord says, I've heard your cry and I've seen your tears. And the Lord said, I'm going to set you up. There's divine appointments. There's divine situations where he, he will speak to you and say, I want you at this place at this time and be there because that's the Lord saying I'm positioning you there to receive and so father I just bless Deborah I thank you for a fresh new anointing I thank you for visiting her in the midnight hour in her dreams and visions Lord he's going to cause you to write so don't be surprised get the pad and pen unless you um, record you can record on your phone and so father I just thank you I feel like he's just he's preparing you for something big and he's just tempering you and he's you know it's like if we're, if we're sharp on our edges the Lord wants to to smooth it out because he wants you to reflect the father do we know where she lives i want to say los no, angeles she county thank you prophetess she remember you yes perry Pear junior high school oh my god so debbie like <laughs> oh my goodness word, go ahead you know if she's if she's ever in the area Yes. You should lay hands on her. Yes, I would love to. She is open wide yes. for an impartation. So what you have could easily be imparted to her. Oh, it's supposed so to be. So make yes. sure that if she lives anywhere in the immediate area, or that she can drive. She it. gets to you, and yeah. we can lay hands on her. It's time. It's she time, Deborah. Is it okay. Deborah. 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 So Deborah. she needs to let Facebook know where. She is, and a number that we can call her. Yes. And we can. Absolutely. You know, uh, we're even going over to pray for somebody after our ministry tonight. Yeah. You know, somebody's in a dire need of oh, prayer, yes. and oh, we're yes. going to meet them at the church building. Deborah, uh, this is a short word, but I believe it's the word of the Lord, you know, to you. Um, the Lord is saying, even as you protected those back then in the natural, the Lord says, I've called you as an intercessor this day and that you'll be protecting many because of your prayers. The Lord says, I have called you, yes, and you sometimes don't understand it, but the Lord said, it is I that is working in you. And the yes. Lord says also this scripture, and you've heard it probably many times, and it's Jeremiah 29, 11. Mm -hmm. Even as uh, Jeremiah said, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you, said the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. And the Lord says, realize, for realization is coming upon you right now, for it is my hand is upon you. The Lord says, yes, I have called you as my interest. That's Amen. What said the Lord. Amen. Well, yes, all prophets really have an anointing to intercede. That's a must. That's a foundational thing. Well, that expected end is a preordained. You have to find what your preordained right. end is, what God has assigned to you. And then you can go and possess that. Right. So I believe God's going to bring her to an understanding that yes. she is not just some little lady trying right. to make it oh, to no. the kingdom of God. Oh, she no. is here to do work for the kingdom. <laughs> People feared you because you're quite the fighter. Um, but the Lord says they're going to fear him inside of you, the God of all glory, of all power inside of you. Oh, yeah. I can't wait to see what happens. Oh, wonderful. Now, George Hoagland, he's another oh, yeah. spiritual son okay. of yours. He needs a job in Orange County. Yes. He wants to be under... He wants to be under our apostleship and discipled as a prophet, prophetic and uh, attend our church. Yes. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> you know he loves you, George. <laughs> well, we decree over George that any desire, the Bible says, the desire of the righteous shall be granted. 
And if you really want to be under spiritual fathering and to be under the apostleship, uh, I believe that God has put that in your heart Amen. and that you will find yourself finding when we get back to meeting in the building, yes. you'll come and we'll lay hands on you and we'll begin yes. to give you assignments Amen. from the Lord. Yes. I mean, I just love to get people into their assignment. Yes. And as, if you heard the message tonight, and I'm sure you did, yeah, he's on. every person who uh, comes into God's kingdom has an assignment on their life. And I believe that tonight God was giving you keys to find your yes. assignment yes. and you'll begin in your prayer life now to start seeing things. You should take a little pad of paper or maybe a little booklet, something that you can write in and begin to write what God is telling you because now we're opening up the floodgates of God. It's like you're going to turn on God's radio. Amen. D did you know that God is speaking all the time? Yes. That anyone that says, I never hear God, <laughs> just doesn't know how to turn the radio on. Because <laughs> anytime you want to hear God, He is speaking to you. Right. He's yes. instructing you. Yes. And that's why David was constantly in relationship with God, because he had learned to open the channels to God and to listen to the radio. That's how the prophetic works. When right. we have somebody that we're ministering to, we just turn the radio on and all of what God thinks about them flows through us and we tell them what the God, uh, God is showing us. So I'm telling you, uh, my sheep hear my voice right. and right. you can hear the voice of God and God's going to start uh, giving you more instructions than you've ever had. So keep a little tablet with That's you because you're going to have daily instructions from the Lord and they'll get deeper and stronger Ooh. and it'll be that you'll find yourself saying, Wow! I am literally called like a David for th such a time as this. Hallelujah. And everything that you ask for, George, it's yours. It's yes and amen. The Lord wants to give you, He wants you to position yourself. You already have the heart and you already have the passion and the obedience to move. And so now you're just waiting for the answers to come. So, Father, we just bless you. We thank you ahead of time, uh, Father, that you hear our prayers. And, Father, I thank you for answering every single thing on here. Job in Orange County, a good job with favor and increase. It's a job that there's no limitations of where you can go with that job. Multiplication in your finances. Hallelujah. You're called to be wealthy, by the way, because he, you know, this one, he's a giver so he he likes to give and he likes to underwrite ministries so i already know the lord already showed me your heart so father grant it to him in the name of jesus and yes your family we love you and thank you for your faithfulness even when you moved from state to other state taking care of your family uh, we understand that you can always stay connected by facebook for now and, and and even texting so we just love everyone that's been showing everyone that's on here apostle uh you know what look at elisa rodriguez Alicia Rodriguez? Yeah, she's looking for a spiritual mother. She's looking for spiritual, a spiritual mother. mother. Well, I know a lady in another church. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he already she likes you, Alicia. She was taken in 1998. Well, she became saved in 1998, always wanted one, but has never been chosen. What does that mean, oh. chosen? Oh, you know what? No, it's not. You know what? Don't, don't wait for that. God has a spiritual father and mother. It, doesn't have, it could be mother or father. I know Benny Hinn said his spiritual father was, um, you know her, she passed away already, She in the Catherine, gifts. Catherine, Catherine, Catherine Kuhlman. Catherine Kuhlman. Yeah, so she was a female. So it could be father, mother. But Lord, I just thank you that you already have one for her. You know, you know the steps of a righteous woman are ordered of the Lord. Yes. She just needs to believe that in the near future, God's going to let your two paths cross. Yes. Because you can impart to her whatever she needs yes you have that strong anointing for impartation and when we're meeting in the building yes. again that'd be a great time for her to come and maybe send a note through the usher that i'm here and you promise to impart to me mm, and, i like that idea remember that we will impart to her whatever her desire yeah. is because yes. god doesn't want you to think small he no. wants you to think big Yes, and we have Sarah Naranjo, who, um, boy, she's on fire for God. You are so on fire, and I thank you for that anointing. The flames are getting higher, and it's like that refining 
fire where the reflection in that fire is your father, Father God. And so, Father, I just thank you, Lord. He's doing a deep work inside of her. You're going to write those songs. Matter of fact, prophet, you prophesied to her. She appreciated everything you said. It was right on, right on target. And the Lord says, he's excel I see the word acceleration. He's, he's accelerating. And Lord, I thank you for her miracle healing from head to toe. I thank you, Lord, for good but, uh, blood flow. I thank you for healed kidneys. I thank you for rooting out diabetes and the residue. Father, I thank you for returning her youth like an eagle, Psalms 103. I thank you, Father, the whole package from head to toe. And he said, don't worry about your grandchildren. He knows. You have a very special relationship with the Father, and it's intimate. I love it. So get going on those um, intimate love um uh, songs to the Father, uh, the Lord's going to give you new songs to sing. And so, Father, I just bless, I just bless this woman of God. You know, Sarah has to <clears throat> understand that you have to make a decision. The Bible says having a willingness to avenge all disobedience once your obedience is fulfilled. Sarah is going to have a healing ministry, but she needs to fulfill obedience to God's word and healing in her own body. Yes. She needs to start decreeing to the devil and to circumstance, to her body, that by his stripes you are healed. God wants us to become more forceful. Yes. And we need to take on the authority of the believer. There is a, a, you know, a, an authority that does not passively say, what will be will be, que sera, sera. Right. It says, my decree by God's word that by his stripes I'm healed yes. and all these symptoms yes. are being driven from my body. Every de evil spirit yes. and every oppressive uh, disease that the enemy is trying to plant in me is bound and cast out and I am healed. If she would say that several days in a row, oh, yes. she would find that she can uh, have a, a great Ooh. miracle in her own body yes. and then she can avenge all disobedience once uh. her obedience is fulfilled. Yes. You, you can't win a battle for others if you're not winning it for yourself. And you know what, you're already, I just see you as like a track runner. And I know, isn't that ironic? because the Lord has given you breath to breathe. I know, oh, your left lung. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that you're drying up the left lung and that uh, total healing being restored to you, the breath of God will be more than just his breath, giving you breath in your lungs to breathe and your respiratory, your immune system, all healed in Jesus' name. But I believe that as you write those songs and you sing those songs to the Lord, you're gonna realize, oh my God, I'm healed. I'm not, I'm not, um, working to breathe anymore but the lord says yes i am life god he's life i mean if we don't have him what's the purpose so the purpose she said well i want my assignment too well i just see you singing songs of healing scriptures uh people returning to the lord the prodigals returning to the father uh being a blessing to little children ministering to them i see her laying hands oh i just see especially small children and praying for men the anointing as soon what well, i feel it right now wow i haven't felt that in this whole segment till right now and so father i thank you for the healing anointing that's resting on Sarah and, and, and whoever else wants to say, I want that, Lord, and he'll give it to you, he'll grant it to you. But there is, uh, I know with Sarah, she is like saying, you know what, Lord, I just give you my life. I give you my whole life, now use me. What's the main thing she wants healing for? It was in her lung, her lungs, her kidneys, diabetes. Let me pray for everyone watching right now. If you're a believer, the Bible says in Matthew 18, 19, if two of you shall agree on earth touching anything you shall ask. Now this is what Jesus said. This isn't just some angel. This is Jesus himself. If two of you agree on earth touching anything you ask, oh it shall be done by my Father which is in heaven. So let's take it to the next level and say, Lord yes. Jesus, if you need a healing right now, yes. anyone there that needs a healing, yes. let's yes. agree with Jesus. Matthew 18, 19, if two of you shall agree, and we're going to agree yes. that Jesus is healing you. Yes. If you agree with me, Jesus says, I'm going to heal you. Yes. It shall be done by my Father, yes. which is in heaven. You, Father. Father, we just agree right now, whatever Thank their you, symptoms are, whatever disease yes, has to Lord. overtaken yes. them, whatever evil spirit Shombra has been Hingria, harassing Shombra them, Hingria. tormenting them, Hombra stealing Hingria, their sleep, Hingria, trying to make Hingria. them 
even in a bondage to some drug. We just decree, Lord, that you have loosed yes. the captive. You have set yes, us free. Lord, Lord Jesus, we agree in your mighty name that even now every evil spirit tormenting us is bound in Jesus' name. It is cast down in chains. We command it to be cast into the pits of hell. The Bible says it will be reserved unto judgment, the final judgment. We decree, Lord, that the Holy Spirit is loosing them from every demonic entanglement, every stronghold of the enemy, every disease that tries to come on them. We command those things to be cast down and Jesus, yes. because we're agreeing in your name, it will be done by our Father yes. which is in heaven. And yes. we can do this each day, agreeing with you and seeing healing. It's yes. the children's bread. It belongs to us. You paid for it. So we thank you. We are healed in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, I just thank you. You're opening someone's right ear in the name of Jesus. And we just take authority over that spirit of infirmity in Jesus' name. It's broken in the name of Jesus, in the presence of God in the presence of his glory so that he will receive glory for your testimony. And so, Father, I just thank you. And I just feel like someone's going through a choking. Uh, that's witchcraft. I break it off of you in the name of Jesus. I thank you for your power, Lord God. So, and Lord, oh, really? So, Father, I thank you. This is a prophet. It's a prophet. Um, Father, I just thank you, Lord. He doesn't, the enemy doesn't want you to speak or to release the word and even over nations. So, Father, I just thank you, Father. I thank you for the deliverance, divine uh, deliverance deliverance and healing in Jesus name and let him heal your childhood. I, I think I'm speaking to a lot of people right now. Let him heal your childhood. I break off all trauma. Open your heart and your spirit for the Holy Spirit to come in and to heal you. He's done that many times through uh, ministers, through the Holy Spirit, through uh, dreams where I saw Jesus touching me. And Father, I just thank you, Lord, that you're touching many, many people, multiple people, Father God, whatever it is, he's delivering someone, many people from fear, for he's not giving you the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. So Father, I just bless you. And then there's someone who's um, battling loneliness, and that could be a lot of people, where you feel alone, especially in the, you know, the requirements uh, now, and not being able to go to church. Uh, that won't be forever, by the way, be encouraged. But Lord, I just thank you father he's calling you into intimacy with him with him with him and so father i just thank you i just feel like a lot of people are battling dr gary loneliness uh, not knowing you know do they matter do uh, i mean is there well, a purpose this may be the perfect time with this virus that has made us stay at home mm -hmm. i want each of you to get a mat a little journal something that you can write in even if it's just a That's tablet good. And I want you to each day take time to be alone with Jesus. He said, yes. go into your prayer closet, but it could be walking around the block. It could be any place where you just get alone with the Lord. And I want you to turn on your radio because at any time, God says, my sheep hear my voice. Yes. That means at any time Amen. you want to hear his voice, all you have to do is turn on the radio and say, Lord, I'm going to listen to you. I'm going to pour out my heart to you. I'm going to tell you what my needs are, but I'm going to listen to what you're saying to me. And I'm going to start journaling what you are saying because my f sheep hear my voice. Right. And if you say you can't hear God, then you're lying because the word says that God's sheep hear his voice. That he says, uh, my, he says, you may all prophesy one by one in Corinthians 14. This means that every one of you watching right now can prophesy. You can hear the voice of God. Prophecy means you're hearing what God is saying, yes. and then you're telling someone else what God is saying to you, and that's a prophecy. So right now, I want you to understand, God's going to give you prophetic words. He's going to start speaking to you, and you're going to write it down, and then you're going to get confirmation because some of the things you'll write down are going to happen maybe this, the next day or two days later, and you're going to say, my God, I have had all this ability. God was always speaking to me, but the radio was turned off. Listen, anytime I want to walk yes. around my house yes. and talk to yes. God, he's talking to me. Right. His, his voice is constantly telling me things. So I just want to encourage you. You do hear the voice of God. Come on. That's a lie from the pit that says God doesn't speak to you. God says, my sheep hear my voice. He says, you may all 
speak, you may all prophesy one by one. That means every one of you can hear God and tell others what God is saying. That is what God's word yes. says. Don't be lied to any longer. Let's move into this realm where we're all God's prophetic people and we're helping others to hear what God is yes. saying to them. That's right. And you're saying, Apostle, that we can all hear. And that's true. That's the scripture. Yeah. So I, I think sometimes we need to pray, Lord, allow me to capture your voice, to recognize your voice, because he is speaking to us. It's just tuning into the proper uh, frequency. So I would just pray for boldness to speak that word that God gives us and to capture the word that we hear because he is speaking. Amen. Well, somebody might say, what if the devil's talking to me? Well, you'll know there's a discernment. Yes. God has given every one of you a discernment. And when the devil is speaking, it's never to bless somebody. It's never something positive. Mm -hmm. It's always you're no good. God doesn't love you. God is done with you. His, oh, yeah. I mean, you're, you didn't fulfill your assignment on the earth. I mean, it's always devilish, evil things. But when God is speaking, he says, go and bless your brother over here that's really been struggling financially. Give him maybe $25 and I'm going to bless you because you obeyed me. God's going to give you assignments. Yes. And you're going to start saying, this is incredible because God wants me to live in assignments from him. Amen. You know what I'm getting right now? A powerful anointing is here right now to deliver you. And the Lord said, ask them this. What are you entertaining? The Lord says that there's a deliverance uh, anointing right now to break the power of the enemy over you. And it has to do with addictions, any kind of addiction. It could be food, gambling, drugs, lying, uh, unforgiveness. It could be pornography. It could be abuse. Maybe you can't stop abusing your spouse. What? Uh, that's not the father's heart, but you can't, you, for some reason you're saying, but I can't stop. It's something that comes over me. Well, you know what? If you will repent right now, Repent right now and say, Father, I am so sorry. Please forgive me. Now deliver me from this evil spirit that it, 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 it like uh, controls you and it pulls you and it pushes you. Actually, they do do that. And so, Father, I just thank you for your delivering power in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father God, because of your blood that they can be free. Jesus said it is finished. He went to the cross for your deliverance, for your salvation. Hallelujah. For your healing and resurrection power. So Father, I thank you right now, right now, right now, and many people, and just surrender to the Father and watch and see what he will do. Now you're going to say, okay, Father, I need to know you're such a great God, a loving Father. I need to know you. I don't really know you. And you're, this is your assignment tonight to read Psalms 51 and make it your prayer. I speak Psalms 91 to protect you that you will see God. Lord, open their eyes that they may see you, see your angels, know your Holy Spirit. Begin right now. Your deliverance is right now. And so, Father, I just thank you. And now if you need to, um, you, maybe they need to give their hearts back to God, rededicate your life back to God. I feel that's really urgent right now in this hour. And so I don't know, a prophet or Dr. Gary, if you want to lead them in that prayer. We, we need to invite the Holy Spirit. You know, God created the worlds. He sent his son. Jesus took all of our sin. He died in our place and gave us eternal life. But then he sent back his Holy Spirit. I want you to be, make the Holy Spirit your best friend yes. from this night forward. Wow. Jesus said that when he comes, he will lead you into all truth. When you become the friend of the Holy Spirit, He's with you every day. He's empowering you to do the works that Jesus did. Jesus is at the right hand of the Father. And when we want our prayers to have significance and power, we pray in the name of Jesus. Yes. But it's the Holy Spirit that enforces the kingdom of God. And I want you to make him your personal friend. I want you to start journaling what God is saying to you. And, and maybe even next week, tell us something yes. that God has said to you because God is always speaking to you. You are so significant yes. and important yes. to the Lord. So let's make the Holy Spirit our personal friend. Amen. You know, what I'm praying on the way to this broadcast, I'm not praying to God. I'm praying to the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, work with me. Cause me to have a special anointing that breaks chains and strongholds amen. of the devil. Amen. Holy Spirit, amen. you've been sent to let me do the works that Jesus did and greater works. 
I just thank God that God's put you on this broadcast today. Yes, and we want to yes. start giving you more Hallelujah. ability to hear the voice of God. So each week we're going to start prophesying yes. and letting you give us some words that God is giving you. Yeah. So, I mean, the Holy Spirit is yes. really wanting to be your Ooh. best friend and to empower you to do the works. Jesus said, when he has come, yes. you will do the works that I've done and greater works than these for I'm going to the Father, and I will send him to you. He will be your comforter. He will empower you. Yes. You will do what I've done. God says, get ready. You're going to do his works in Jesus' mighty name. Okay, there's another urgency. There's someone that's thinking about t taking their life. Don't take your life. He loves you. Jesus loves you. There's a purpose and there's a plan for your life. Do not. And I just, I can see, ooh, I can see one person in particular. Your name is Michael. And you're like, what? Yes, you. The Lord says, I'm singling you out. I have a plan and a purpose for you. I love you. And so, Father, I just thank you, Lord. Ooh, there's a surrounding of angels. Put that down, what you had in your hand, put it down. So, Father, I speak life to this individual. And everybody else that had contemplated that even wrote notes. No, tear it up. Now you go to God. He's, he's got lots of notes for you and his word. And so, Father, I just feel like, Prophet Amos, I think you have something for this person who wanted to take their life. I'm what just, would you we'll say? Just pray for him. We just speak life over him right now. And I believe yes. it's what is Psalms 118, 17. Oh, yes. You know, if you right now look to God, you know, I believe the Lord is saying to you, you will not die, but live. Amen. And you will actually declare the works of the Amen. living God. So just go ahead and look to him, lift your hands, and begin to thank him right yes, now for Lord. life. Thank you, Father. Life, life. And we just decree right now that God's peace is coming upon you. Yes. In the name That's of good. Jesus Christ. And also the Lord is giving you understanding. Mm. There have been some concerns. You, there have Father. been things that you have been concerned mm. about. And the Lord says, I'm giving you understanding yes. of these things. The Lord says, I have not forsaken you. I've Amen. heard your cries. Amen. I've seen you get down before and pray unto me. The Lord says, I am the God yes. that healeth thee. Yes, yes. So just receive of him right now in the Thank name of Jesus. You, so Father, Father, we just decree Shandra life Shandra over this person, over these people, Shandra whoever they may be, Shandra in the name of Shandra Jesus. Shandra Father, we just thank you right now, Lord God, that you're healing, Father Shandra God. Shandra you're healing from the top of their head, Lord, Shandra to the bottom of their feet. Lord, everything, Father, you said that you would perfect those things that concerned them. Mm -hmm. So, Father, we just thank you right now, Lord God, that all those concerns right now, yes. Father God, are being placed in your hands. Yes. And, Father, healing is taking place even this very moment in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for healing and restoration, Father God. As we close today, let me say that you have no idea how important mm -hmm. you are mm -hmm. to God and to his kingdom. You know, God took a prostitute who was in the walls of Jericho and he converted her through Joshua and those that visited her and she became part of the line that brought forth Jesus. If God could use prostitutes and in, Come on. he had money changers and people that yeah. were the offscouring of the world, God says he has an assignment for you. Man. If you're watching today, God has an assignment and we decree that God's going to start confirming that you're so important to the kingdom of God and God's going to start giving you the ability to hear his voice. You're going to become prophetic. You're going to start moving in assignments from God. Yes, Healings yes, are going to yes, happen yes, through your yes. hands. Get ready. Quit listening to the devil. He tries to take you out. He tries to tell you how un unimportant you are, how you're a nothing, how you should kill yourself. I mean, the devil no. is a liar from the Shum beginning. Rahim, and yes, God Shum says, Rahim, I redeemed yes. you. Yeah. Even out of your sins, I redeemed you. Yes. And I'm going to give you the strength by the Holy Spirit to live holy before me. Amen. Get ready. God's going to bless you this week. He's going to confirm that you are one of a kind. Yes. He didn't make two of Come you. On. He only made one of you with an assignment. And you're going to fulfill that assignment. I decree the blessing of the Lord over your life. In Jesus' name. Do you know like when you see a sale sign on the grass when you're trying to sell your house? Well, I see a sign on your grass in front of where you live, and it says eviction notice to the devil. So we take authority over that spirit of death. He's got to go. Vacate. Get out. Get out. Now, Lord, then ask the Lord to come in. Ask him to come in. Anoint your house and give your house. Dedicate your house to the Father. Watch, because I've lived this. I've lived it. So, Father, I just thank you for the delay. Now I feel a peace. 
So, Father, we just well, speak shalom. Well, we've had too much fun tonight. We went yes. way over time. <laughs> but uh, let's work wow. with us next time. You know, give us your email yes. through the... Quick, what is it? We're Facebook. on Facebook. 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 They can write while they're on All Facebook. Right. Just let us know what you need, what you need prayer for, and what God has done to fulfill our prayers for you. So we bless you now. Yes. Angels are going to follow you. We'll be back Thursday at 7. And we'll be back this Thursday. And seven. we'll continue all of this at 7 o'clock on Thursday night. Amen. Amen. 7 o'clock, Facebook, Thursday night. We love you. We can't wait to hear from you. <laughs> God bless you. <laughs>